Hello, everyone, and welcome to Esri's Community Maps Program webinar. I'm Seth Sarakaitis, the Community Maps Program Manager at Esri. I'm here with my colleagues, Dean Kensock and Mike Ridlin. We're going to give you some updates and announcements to the program. First, I'll start with an overview. This year, we celebrate our 10th year anniversary of the program which means for 10 years, we've been collecting rich local data from our ArcGIS user community to enhance the Living Atlas foundation layers like imagery and base maps. This community is contributing because they're benefiting from their own data being used in these ArcGIS maps. By contributing, they're making their online applications or story maps more useful and powerful. But what these contributors might not know, or maybe they do, is that by making the base maps in their part of the world better, many other users of the maps can also make better applications in web maps. The trend is simple. When we, as the community, improve the base maps, you'll be able to build better maps and applications and get better results. Community maps is about improving the maps. And you can do this by these three ways. You can provide us feedback, which means to tell us very specific corrections to what you see in the maps today. You can create or edit features using the Community Maps Editor app. This means adding detail to the maps when you don't have the data. Or if you manage authoritative data, you can share it with us via contributor. Our typical contributors are local governments, national mapping agencies, schools, and universities, and we have thousands of contributors across the globe. Our contributors provide data for high-resolution imagery, comprehensive addresses, detailed elevation, real-time or near real-time stream gauge locations, and layers used to enhance the popular base maps used across ArcGIS Desktop, ArcGIS Online, and mobile applications. Becoming a contributor is simple. You register at communitymaps.arcjs.com. You get approved. You send your data as a prepped geodatabase, or you connect your feature services to our app to submit your data. Something to keep in mind is that Esri's vector based maps are recreated about every three weeks. So help keep the base maps fresh. We suggest contributing once or even twice a year. If you have important developments, you can submit these as off cycle. Our contribution process normally takes about eight to nine weeks on average to publish a new contribution into the vector base maps. The editor app updates are a little quicker and new features are live in the base maps around four to six weeks after they're created. And lastly, the World Geocoding Service in ArcGIS is updated every three months with new address contributions. Next, I'll turn this over to Dean and Mike to cover uh, data sharing options and some tool updates, and I'll close with some further announcements. Dean, it's all yours. Great. Thank you, Seth. My name is Dean Kensock, and I'm the CTO for ArcGIS Content. I'd like to tell you about a new data sharing option that we have for the Esri Community Maps program. As mentioned earlier, one of the options for Community Maps contributors is to share data managed by their organization to be used in Esri base maps. These contributions greatly enhance the base maps that Esri hosts and make available to our users in ArcGIS. In recent months, we've heard contributors ask if Esri can also make their data available to other mapping platforms that are used by their organization or local community to help improve the quality and consistency of those maps too. In response to that feedback, Esri is now offering a new option for contributors to enable Esri to share their data for use in other mapping platforms. If this option is enabled by contributors, Esri will share their data with selected Esri partners and other organizations, such as OpenStreetMap, which maintain popular mapping platforms that are used by local businesses and citizens. So, how does data sharing work? Since the beginning of our Community Maps program, Esri has said that we would not redistribute user-contributed data without the contributor's consent, and we have always maintained that policy. 
we are now enabling our contributors to give consent to share their data via our Community Maps website. Contributors now have the option to enable data sharing in their account settings of the website. Existing contributors can visit the website to review their contributions and, if they choose, enable this data sharing. New contributors will be automatically enabled for this data sharing, but can opt out at any time if they choose. In either case, contributors can update their choice in the account settings at any time. Esri will monitor the choices of our contributors and, on a periodic basis, share the latest data contributions. Esri will assemble the data that has been shared and create a downloadable layer package that will be shared via a private group in ArcGIS Online. The data will be provided under a Creative Commons CC by Attribution Open Data License with an explicit waiver to be used in OpenStreetMap. Additional details on the data sharing process and open data license can be found in the Community Maps data sharing article on the ArcGIS blog and in an FAQ page referenced there. Now, let's take a quick look at how Community Maps data sharing can be enabled and how the data can be accessed and used by other organizations. From the Community Maps website, organizations can register or sign in to share data. In this case, I have signed in as an existing contributor. In the settings for my account, I can choose to enable data sharing for the layers that I have contributed. After the shared data has been assembled by Esri, it will be made available in this private group in ArcGIS Online. Partner organizations that are added to this group will be able to preview the available data by viewing the areas of interest that are available in each version of the data and by selecting the AOI for an individual contributor such as Lake County, Illinois. Here you can see the number of available features by layer. Organizations can then view information about the layer package containing this data, including the license agreement and the terms of use, and then download the data or open in ArcGIS Pro. In ArcGIS Pro, users can see the same areas of interest as shown in the web map before, and zoom into a selected area of interest, such as Lake County. As an example of how this data might be used by other organizations, this community map data is being downloaded and prepared for use in OpenStreetMap, which is a free editable map of the world. The processed data is made available as ArcGIS feature layers via this group in ArcGIS Online, which includes layers such as building footprints and address points for many different communities. These layers are now being made available to the OpenStreetMap community through OSM editor apps such as Rapid and Jossum which enable OSM mappers to browse a collection of ArcGIS datasets and select a layer to add to the map. All of the features in the layer will then be available to OSM mappers, including all of the fields that have been prepared as proper OSM tags so they can be added to OpenStreetMap. The Community Maps features will then be added to all of the OpenStreetMap offerings available in ArcGIS, including live OSM feature layers that can be used for display and query, as well as this new OpenStreetMap Daylight Map, which includes data from OpenStreetMap as well as other data providers such as Microsoft and Esri Community Maps contributors. If you would like to see your data published in ArcGIS and other mapping platforms such as OpenStreetMap, we would encourage you to join the Esri Community Maps program and enable the new data sharing option. And now I would like to hand it over to Mike to provide some updates on our tools. That's terrific. Thanks, Seth and Dean. My name is Mike Ridland. I'm a project manager on the Community Maps team. And I'd just like to take a minute to talk about the sharing data part of the Community Maps program and what that means. We've discussed communities that enhance the base map foundation with rich and current content. And our contributors contribute data through one or many of these communities. Now, Seth mentioned earlier that we have a program landing page, and this is exactly where you would register for our program and also opt in if you decided to do partner sharing. One of the important things before you get started is knowing which layers you can contribute. We have three resources. The first is the Living Atlas story maps that describe these communities. If you go to the Living Atlas and then use the Contribute tab, you'll see separate story maps for each of these communities. We also have a layers list that explains layers and these layer details. This is really handy if you're curious about what particular layers you can contribute to the program. For instance, if you'd like to 
contribute building footprints, you can go to this layer list and click on the building footprint question mark and see a pop-up of what we mean by building footprints. You can do this with all of the other layers. Here's one for landscapes and sports fields. The third resource is a story map that explains the process of how you would go through and make a data contribution. This is a collection of links to documents, to resources, and to videos about this whole contribution process. Now let's talk about using the Contributor app to actually register and contribute. We mentioned earlier that you register from the program landing page. What registration means is you just let us know who you are, where in the world you are, and which layers you'd like to register for. After you register, the Community Maps team reviews and approves your registration. And once you're approved, you can share your data in the form of a geodatabase or through a service. Now let's talk about how that might work. If you're going to contribute data from a geodatabase, there's a few things that you would do. The first thing you would do is download and use a set of data prep tools. These prep tools standardize the data and accelerate the contribution process. When we talk about using the prep tools, what we really mean is that you would run them from ArcGIS Pro. And you run a tool on a layer, one layer at a time. If you were going to provide building footprints, there would be a separate building footprints tool that you would run against your layer. And that would pre-process your building footprints into that standardized data template I mentioned. If you had road center lines, you would run a road center lines tool. If you had parcels, you would run a parcels tool. So you run the tools on a layer, one layer at time until you're done, and all of those output layers are saved into a file geodatabase. The final step, you would simply zip up that file geodatabase and then use the contributor app to send it in to us. If you already have your data in the form of a service, one thing you can do is contribute that data from that service. And the steps here would be establishing your service delivery parameters within the contributor app. And here, there's a built-in data prep process. You would set the source, frequency, and other parameters directly inside the contributor app. One thing you can do also is create a service subscription, and this really helps. What that service subscription can do is automatically set an interval in which you would like to contribute. If you'd like to contribute your building footprints every six months, you can set the frequency every six months, and Esri will go in and automatically pull that data from your service every six months. Of course, the program will let you know before that happens in case there's any changes you'd like to make. The final step is to contribute that layer using the contributor app. Let's talk for a minute about contributions of other types such as addresses, imagery, elevation, and stream gauges. These different types have unique requirements and you can learn about those requirements directly from the Living Atlas story maps I mentioned earlier. Once you know about these requirements, the next step is to register for these layers using the contributor app. When you're registered, community map curators in those respective areas are notified. And once registered, they'll directly work with you on any of the next steps. And the final thing I'd like to talk about is how you would manage these contributions using the My Account tab. Here I'm logged into the Contributor app. And within the My Account tab, you can control and change your point of contacts, your decision about opting in for data sharing with our mapping partners, the layers that you are registered for, and layers that you've defined for service contribution. And you can update any of these settings at any time. This was a quick overview of the tools that you might use for sharing data with Esri. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back to Seth. Seth is going to talk about the Esri Editor app and how you can use it. It's pretty good stuff. Seth? Thanks, Mike. I'd like to change gears and talk a little about our Community Maps Editor app. As I showed earlier, the Editor app is placed between providing feedback and contributing data. This is on purpose. It's positioned that a user would be more invested than just drawing a box around a feature as feedback, but rather the user wants this detail in the map for their own purpose. An example could be a school district that's adding large-scale detail to the school campuses across their region for facilities management or public safety. Or perhaps a summer intern at a local government who's creating recreation facilities in city parks, which make the base maps more usable in a park finder application. The app has a set of feature types intended to add detail to the base maps at large scales for campus-like features such as schools, business parks, 
recreation areas, or even historical places like these examples. All ArcGIS users with an organizational account can use this app. Start at communitymaps.arcgis.com and click Edit Features. Then sign in, and for the first time, you'll need to join the group. This group contains not only the editor app itself, but also contains the approved editor app data, which you can download, and other help materials along with several video links. Open the app to get started. I'm going to demonstrate the app briefly so you'll get a sense of how it works. So I've got the editor app open and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First, I'm gonna find the location that I wanna create my features. And I know of a, a good area in Omaha, Nebraska. And I do a search in the find panel. And once I click on the search, it'll zoom me to that location. Once I get to the location, I can zoom in further into the base map, and I can see that this is a park. And when I switch to the base map view, the editing view, I can see that this park actually contains a fair amount of recreational uh, equipment, tennis courts, soccer fields, and some buildings and parking lots. So I'm going to just demo how to create some of these features. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in to this parking lot. And I'm gonna create this parking lot feature. So what I do is I start with new and I go to choose. It'll open up my choose panel and I can select parking lot under hardscape. I just need to pick a good place to start and I'm gonna start right here in the corner. I'm gonna use the letter M on my keyboard to change the line type from a solid straight line to a curve line. And I'm going to create this arc for the parking lot. Then I'm going to hit the M key again, and it'll toggle me back to a straight line for these other parts of the parking lot. Go ahead and change back to a, a curve line for this piece. And I can just kind of digitize this into place. And this is kind of the, the gist of how we, we create these features. So I'll just kind of work across here. Now, the type of feature I want to create is going to be cut. And so I want to go ahead and click that. So now I've got a parking lot that's added. And I'm going to go ahead and add this building. So again, new, choose, and then go to building. And I can click on this, uh, use my space bar this time. And the space bar will actually activate something called layer hints. The layer hints are going to tell me when I'm at a right angle to the last feature or the last part of the feature that I created. And I do want to create these features with right angles. So I'm being very careful to create these features. Now I can double click the last piece and that building can be added. Now, if we knew the name of this building, we could add the name into the properties panel right here. Let's just say that it's called uh, Tennis Center. And that label will show up. Next, I wanna show just a couple of other feature categories or feature types. Um, first, I wanna start with the tennis courts. So I'm gonna go to sports and I'm gonna pick tennis court exterior. Now this is a green and I have some cases where the tennis court exterior is red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this outer edge and it's going to show up as a different color green than the, the park background that's there. And so I'm going to create this feature like this. You can see the, the hints are kind of telling me where to go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the interior. Now there's a couple of ways that I can do this. And the first one I want to demonstrate is called the split. So right now I've got this exterior feature selected. That's why it's highlighted. And I can click the split button. And over here, I can change the functionality from a line to a polygon, but I'm gonna keep it as a polygon. And I'm gonna show how I can change this interior polygon. This is where the, the playing court itself, I can actually create a split of this. Now what I just did was I, this is an exterior, this is the interior. But I can change the properties for this 
to be another category. So I'm going to change this one to be the interior. So then what I can do is I can copy and paste this feature and I can move this over like this and paste it into place and it will cut into that existing feature. And I will go ahead and change this to an interior. And now I've got two interiors. OK, so the map is starting to come together. The last thing I'm going to demonstrate is uh, kind of adding the detail, which I can add these lines for the tennis court. So I'll go to New and Choose. And under the Line category, there's a category called Sports Field and Court Line. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, I could just digitize these lines. Uh, individually. But what I would like to do here is is actually demonstrate we have some pre-built stencils that are just features that we've created in advance and you can pick these. So we've got some basic ones for parking, uh, we've got ones for sports field, ones for polygons, even letters and numbers that might be used on sports fields. So under sports we actually have this one called tennis court uh, interior it's a tennis court with no lines around the the outside the, no border so i drag this in and then i stretch it and scale it now i can also rotate it because i i do want this to be as as close to as, uh, as possible and then when i'm done i can hit the check mark and again i can copy and paste this feature and it can come over to the the other uh, court over here if i need to adjust it i can adjust it and paste it into place so let's go ahead and clear our selection and then just zoom out and i'm going to switch over to the, the actual existing base map and we'll start to see what this is coming together so again i would just continue to do this type of process for the rest of the tennis courts as well as these uh these soccer fields and i could even add in the the lines that are in the parking lot. So I'll go ahead and stop there. Some of you watching that demo may have noticed the app looked a little different. We made some recent updates and I wanted to point out just a few recent changes to the editor app. If you've used the app before, the general functionality from the first version to this version is the same. But by popular request, we now let users add their own imagery service or feature services into the app. So if you have an imagery service that is better than the current world imagery in the app, you can add this service in the layers panel and then use it to create features. You can also load in an image of a plan or drawing of your campus and rubber sheet the image into place and then digitize features on top of this image. Lastly, there are a few enhancements to make you more productive, like copy and pasting of features, as well as some user interface updates. Be sure to check out the What's New article under the Help panel. Next, I want to show you a story map that's been developed about the editor app called the Community Maps Editor Experience. This story map is part of the editor app group and was created to help you find and view all of the great data that has already been created since the launching of the editor app. We currently have over 1,500 members that are creating features all over the world. And here are a few of the places I'd like to highlight. In this view, I can see all the areas of interest added to the editor app. They show up as red dots. From here, I can zoom in to some great detail, like these government locations built in Pinellas County, Florida. Or I can zoom over to a zoo outside of Liverpool, England. I can also go down to Portugal, where a racetrack has been created inside the editor app. Lastly, I'll show you a beautiful mosque that was developed inside the app in Abu Dhabi. I invite you to explore this app 
and get inspired to help improve Esri's base maps. Next, I want to make some announcements before we conclude. The base map product management team at Esri announced last year that some of the base maps hosted in ArcGIS will be moving to mature support. These are the raster tile base maps, like the World Topographic, which was the foundation of the Community Maps program. But don't worry, all of your contributions are part of the vector base maps, which are now the future of ArcGIS, and include more base map styles, they include your data at more scales, and are updated more often. Mature support simply means that Esri will continue to host these raster base map services for the foreseeable future, but they will not be updated with new data. So this means a few things for community map contributors. First, you'll need to do an inventory of your web maps and apps, and be sure that you have the vector base maps as your default base maps in your ArcGIS online organization, and have these wired up into your applications. If you have questions about this process, we recommend you reach out to your Esri account manager who can guide you to some resources to make this transition. The next announcement follows along with Dean's previous discussion. If you are an existing Community Maps contributor, please sign back in to the Contributor app and opt in to share your data with Esri and Esri's partners. Lastly, please feel free to reach out to our email alias. We'd love to hear from you about how we can make our program better for the future. With that, we'll conclude our webinar. Thank you very much for listening. And on behalf of the Community Maps team, we look forward to working with you.